Hi FlossTube friends, I'm Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher here on YouTube, also on Instagram, and I have a cross stitch shop at coloradocrossstitcher.com. All those links are in the show notes below. So this is my channel about my own personal cross stitching with a little bit of shop news at the very end of the video. I have so much to show you guys today. Um, I think it's been five weeks since my last one because I didn't do it last week because of Thanksgiving. So a lot to show you. So I've got things that I've worked on, things that I've finished, a new freebie for you, a new pattern for you. I did some themed um, stitching tool cases that were super fun to do. So I was going to show you that. I have an idea for holiday gifts for your stitchy friends. So let's jump right in. First of all, my calendar, and I don't think I showed you the final October because I think I did it maybe the last weekend, but not the last few days. So that's October. This is again the Book of Days, and Needlework Press comes out with these every year. We always carry them in the shop, and it's just a great way to keep track of your stitching. So down the edge here, I keep track of what patterns I started that month, what fabric I used, although I forget to tell you the fabric all the time. I know I do that, and I apologize. Here's November, which is not complete and December is all ready to fill in and then the whole book will be done again. I can't wait. So next time I do floss tube, which will be, I guess, after Christmas. Yeah, the weekend after Christmas or somewhere in there. Um, I'll show you all the pages in this book because I, I add a lot of extra pages and a lot of extra things and I, we've talked about that before, but I will go through that the next time. So um, let's first start with things that I have either started or made progress on in the last, since my last floss tube. So I did pull out my Modern Folk Embroidery Family Patchwork Sampler. And I'm doing this for my dad. Remember, I do different samplers for different family members. And I've had a hard time coming back to this since he passed away a year ago. So it was good to get it out and start working on it again. I'm doing mine on 40 count platinum. And I'm using NPI silks in color number 324. And here is where I am today. So I basically had this top corner, the top border, and this border. So I did the house, I did those two hearts with crowns, I did the whole middle medallion. There's a lot of stitching in that middle medallion. And the two little tabs up top, I have to do the two on the bottom. And I really enjoyed working on it again. It was fun to get it out, and I can't wait to get the whole thing done because it's such a beautiful pattern. So I worked on that. I feel like I worked on things for longer than usual. You know, usually I try and work on each piece for about a week in between my, well, each month. And this time I feel like I worked on things a little longer because I couldn't really put them down, which was nice. All right, the next one is something that I had in my um, project possibilities bag bin. Remember I showed you that bin last time, I think. And I hadn't started it yet. It was one of my new starts in that bin. And I picked it up and I thought, well, I'm going to work on the bottom and maybe I'll do the girl. And I finished the whole thing because again, I couldn't stop working on it. So this is the Embroiderous Stocking by Kathy Barrick. And I'm stitching mine on 40 count straw. Now that I say 40 count, I'm second guessing myself. I think 40 count straw, but I'm going to look it up. Um, yep, 40 count straw by Weeks Dye Works. So here is my stocking. That took a half a yard of fabric just for the length because it's very long. Isn't that going to look so cute when it's finished though? I did change, let's see, what did I change? I changed in the pattern, the dress is all one color 
and I decided to do a darker, all called for colors, well in this dress. I did a darker down here and a lighter up here so it looks like a skirt and blouse. And I put my name on there and I put my maiden name because that's when I first learned how to cross stitch so I thought that would be kind of fun. And I did, I think, change the color of the blue. I wanted a little brighter blue. And then the other thing I did was in the alphabet down on the bottom, there was no J, as is common in a lot of older alphabets. But since my daughter is Julia, I always like to put a J in the alphabets when I can. So I don't remember what I took out. I took the I out and made it a J instead. Who needs an I? We don't need an I. I put a J. So I am going to send this one off to be finished because I just don't want to have to deal with it. I, I'm afraid that I will mess it up. I know that looks weird without her arm, but see when it makes into a stocking, it'll look okay. It was fun to stitch. There's a, there are a lot of stitches in that dress though. I didn't think I'd ever get done with that dress. But I love how it turned out. Cannot wait to send it off and get it back finished. And then the next thing I did was I started a new project. This is Happy Christmas. And somebody on my Instagram told me it's out of print. So it may be out of print. I got mine this summer at the attic in Arizona when I went to summer school. So I don't know if they still have any copies left. And on this, there are actually five different colors. So there's a light red and a dark red, a light green and a dark green. And I decided I wanted to do mine in just three colors, red, green, and gold. So this is another one. I started it uh, a week ago tomorrow, I think last Saturday, and I've just not been able to stop stitching on it. So here's my progress so far. And I'm using a uh, 40 count toasted coconut by Fiber on a Whim. And I'm changing a little bit like I, I wanted the words on there to be a different color. On here, they're the same color. I changed up this tree down here, added a little bit of color to that. So I'm changing a little bit, but um, not the design. So I don't know, I'm gonna keep working on that this weekend. I don't know if I'm gonna work on it and finish it by Christmas or if I'm gonna start something else because I've got other things that I'm just really, really anxious to stitch. So I might, I might put it on hold. Whoops. Okay, and then I don't think I, I don't think I had this done. Oh, I did, I did have this done last time but not fully finished. So this is the Christmas Quaker by Primrose Cottage. And remember I did it, last time I showed you, I did it in colors, just for fun. I love it also in the single, single color red. Um, you just can't go wrong, it's such a cute design. But I had done this with their Autumn Quaker and so I thought, well, I'll try it with the Christmas Quaker. And now they're coming out with the Winter Quaker, which we've already ordered from them. And hope to get any day, and I'll do that same thing there. So that's a little finish. I just, I always um, stuff my pillows with uh, lizard litter, crushed walnut shells. I also, I figured I should mention this because somebody asked about it. Um, after I sew the pillow inside out, so you know you put right sides together and you sew all around and leave a pocket at the bottom, um, then I, before I turn it right side out, I put iron-on interfacing against the back of the actual stitching piece because I don't want the lizard litter or the crushed walnut shelves to abrade against that. I don't think that that would be a problem but it just feels safer for me to protect the back of the stitching like that. And then I stuff it really firmly. And when I do the stuffing, I really just either take sometimes one of those um, wooden stuffing tools you get in a fiber fill bag or a chopstick. 
I, and I really chop, chop, chop down into the corners because that helps settle all of the lizard litter tightly. And I like my pillows to be tightly stuffed. I have some at the shop that I stuffed like three years ago and I totally have to redo them because they're just not tightly stuffed. And then I use, I think, the Valentine color of chenille around the side. So, and this one was done, okay, I should have looked this up. This was done on 40 count, I'm pretty sure. Let me tell you, trying to be better about that. Holiday Quaker. Miss Quaker 40 count frozen forbidden fiber so 40 count frozen forbidden fiber on that one and a lot of times when people see the this one and the autumn one in the store they're like oh I didn't realize it was so small well they don't call for you to do it this small so if you do on the called for fabric I don't know what they call for let me tell you 28 count two over two. So basically they do a 14 count size of a 14 count. So that would be much bigger than this. So don't judge um, if you want to do this or not thinking, oh, that's way smaller. I wanted something bigger because of course you can stitch it a lot bigger and it would just look fabulous. So that was that one. And then I did up this one quick this week, deck the halls. Well, I guess I did it last weekend because it was before I started in on my Happy Christmas. So I love these little narrow pillows. Um, she's got pumpkin, a pumpkin row. She has a tomato row, which I've done. Um, now she has, uh, I feel like there's something else. But this deck, the halls, was so cute. So here's this one. I did that on 36 count. I think it's mushroom. And I changed out, let's see, she did it in, and this is beautiful, the color she did it in. She did it in like a pale pink and a pale green, and I, I thought that was really beautiful. But I was trying new threads, which I'll tell you about later, and I, so I did it with the blue. But I just love the little skinny pillows because sometimes when you put pillows together and you put them in a dough bowl and you just need a little something at the bottom of them, and this is these little skinny pillows are great just to tuck in the bottom and kind of cover up the bottom row so i loved doing on that and that was like a one night project so quick and simple okay then let's see i framed two pieces um, they're not nailed into the frame yet but i did my part the lacing and paul always finishes them off he adds the glass for me and um, make sure they're secure in the frame. So the first thing I framed was Sarah Barnes by the Scarlet House. Okay, I should have looked and see what I did that on. I should have, okay, 40 count chocolate milk fabrics by Steph. Okay, 40 count chocolate milk. And here's the little uh, piece. And I, this is an old, um, well, I don't know that it's very old, but I got it at an antique store for like three bucks. So I'm always looking for frames that have kind of the, the vintage painted look, which I know is not necessarily old. Some people do that new, but I always look for those frames. And then Paul cut it, had to cut it down a little because it was a little bit bigger than what this piece called for. I love this piece. I love the colors. I love the size of it. I mean, it's going to look so cute on a sampler wall because I'm always looking for smaller pieces or oriented a different way kind of pieces like this that will just kind of mix it up on the sampler wall. So I'm glad to have that one done. And then I also framed this one, which is this, one of my oldest, oldest whips from the late 80s I think um, Judith Kirby's Victorian's house number nine I shared this with you I think the last on my last floss tube 
that I pulled it out. I think what I had, let's see, what did I have done before? I think I had just part of the gate and the pumpkin or something. I don't know. But I finished it last time and I happened to have a frame already for it. So there's that. I still like this. Isn't it funny? I have, I know you guys are like this too, but don't we all have some old patterns from back in the day when we were stitching that we just think, oh man, I would never stitch that now. But aren't there still some patterns that you look at and you think, I love that as much as I loved that 20 years ago. And this is one of them uh, that I love as much as I loved when I started it. It's done on 14 count, uh, some kind of gray. It was, it came with the kit. It was a kit that I ordered, so it came in the kit. So I'm not sure what it is, but it is for sure 14 count, so. Which was kind of fun to stitch on again. I don't do a lot of 14 count. So that was fun. All right, and then I am gonna show you my new pattern, because that's three little pillows that I did. So, you know, I did the um, Words for Home Harvest in this fall, and now we have Words for Home Joy. It did the same format, uh, where I have three different pillows that all come in the pattern. And of course you could do any combination of this. You could stitch the joy without the houses in the middle. I love houses, so my whole thought with this Words for Home is I'm going to put houses in each of these, but it would look adorable without the um, houses in the middle too. So here are the little pillows. So here's the joy. Has little presents on the sides. Simple border. Quick to stitch. And again, you could leave off the presents if you just want the word joy, that would also be cute. Or it would be cute to just do the center wreath with the houses in the middle and leave off the J and the Y. And then the little mini row of houses. And I did tuck the word joy in there too. You can never have too much joy. And then the pile of presents. And my thought on these, um, this whole series that I'm doing, and of course I have more planned, is that it's one pattern that you get a trio of um, little stitches that all go together, use the same thread colors, and so it's easy to tuck all three of them in a bowl. Of course, we've got the little skinny one to go in the bottom if you want to. Easy to tuck them into a bowl for a display, and they all go together, and you've got you know, one pattern, you get three, three things done. So that is new in our shop now. Words for Home Joy. I hope you like it. And then I have, um, I'm going to talk about the free pattern. Oh, I have fuzz on my shoulder. Have you all been watching that little piece of fuzz the whole time? <laughs> well, I don't know what I did with it. Okay, I have a free pattern that I did. And um, it just so happened to work out that if you do it on 25 count Lugana over one, it fits on an Altoid tin. And if you do 36 count over two, it fits on a wooden box from Hobby Lobby and it's the playing card box. I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. So, but it's the size of putting two decks of playing cards next to each other and on the pattern, which is um, if you go to our homepage and you use the down arrow that says patterns, use the down arrow and click and all of the designers we carry will all drop down. And then there's a section for free patterns over on the side and then click on that. But when you download the free pattern, it will tell you the, the item number for this box from Hobby Lobby. So, but my idea was, you could make these for your stitching friends for the holidays. Or if you're going to a retreat and you need little table gifts or you wanna give a gift to the person you're traveling with to the retreat, um, whatever. So this is the size of it. Stitching friends are the best. And this, I still have uh, mints in here, but this is the uh, tin. I also tell you what size to cut your 
foam board or your mat board. And you, if you don't have a cutter, which most people don't cut their own, um, you can go to Hobby Lobby and have them cut something. Now I did put this one on mat board and it's a little thick. So I also, Paul also cut a little piece of, no, this is foam board. He cut a piece of mat board, which would be thinner. So you might want to do one versus the other. And of course you can put ribbon around the border here. I just worried about finishing the top. And then I just put sizzle, um, Lady Dot creates a sizzle pom-pom around the edge. But my thought is you could just give them this, but it's perfect for these little scissors. These are, um, what are they called? Snips, something snips that we have in the shop. And these fit perfectly in there. You could put snips and a package of needles and a little unstitcher, one of those little unstitcher th tools. So you could put a few things in, it'd be a cute little gift, but eat the mints first. So it doesn't rattle like that. And then this is it in a bigger size. So this is the 25 count over one. This is the 36 count over two. I probably did that on light mocha. I, I say it in the pattern. I don't remember what I did it on. And then this is what the box looks on the, like on the inside. Of course I painted it. It comes natural wood, but it has um, sections in here, which is kind of handy and a little latch. So anyway, it's really, it's really fast to stitch up and I just thought it would be fun to do for your stitching besties if you are looking for a cute little gift. So again, that's a free pattern on our website. And now that we're talking about uh, little boxes to keep tools in, I wanted to show you, this is something I've been wanting to do with um, my boxes. I bought two extra boxes to do two themed toolkits. Let me show you. So first I'm going to show you my original kit and this comes in a bigger box and these have been sold out. They're by Decor, Decor Bay I think it's called. These have been sold out for since Tanya from the Scarlet House and I did that video this summer on how to how to do these boxes. You might remember that I took it to a retreat and I was so disappointed because the edges started peeling. So we've got this beautiful case. Of course it's fake leather, but I didn't expect the edges to peel off. And so the first thing I tried was I ordered um, leather cording. Was it called cording? Leather cording, I think, on a spool from Amazon and I put it on and it was a matte finish and remember I told you that I used um, Aileen's tacky glue which is what I used to put all my trims on and it because it always dries clear and this did not dry clear and it just looked terrible I showed it to you in one of my videos and so I tried to think of other things I could do like I ordered um, brass corners thinking I could just put corners on the edges and cover that up but the brass corners are squared off and these are rounded edges and anyway I wasn't sure what to do and I was so sad because I love this box and I'll show you the inside again in a minute. Then I found this corded leather, fake leather I'm sure, at Hobby Lobby and it is a little glossy and it worked so much better. I also glued it on. I was super careful not to go outside the lines with the glue. Um, but I think it turned out a lot better. Now I'm trying to decide if I'm going to put it on the bottom or not. None of the bottom edges have had any wear or tear. I assume they probably will eventually. So, But anyway, I love this box. Here's the inside of my box. It has all kinds of meaning for me. Um, this clothespin was in one of my grandma's sewing baskets. I don't know why a clothespin. But I loved that. These are needles from my one grandma. I put a little thing that I stitched. Of course, my red kohanas, red glasses, little pin cushion. So I just filled it with things that I love. And I think that I've decided that I'm just going to keep this one at home and not 
take it around with me. I'm just going to keep it by my stitching chair. Um, I like having it opened up and seeing all the fun things. And it was fun to collect red themed items. Not too hard because red is one of my favorite colors. So that is my at home stitching box, I'm going to call it. And then I had ordered two of these boxes and I will link to these below in the show notes because these seem to be plentiful. And it's a smaller size, but I kind of like that. It's a little easier to take to stitch nights and on retreats and in different things you might want to go to. So this one I bought in black because I wanted to make a Halloween themed stitching box. So I'll show you that one. And again, it was really fun to put together. I didn't put it together until after Halloween, so there probably would have been more Halloween things that I could find during the season if I had looked. But again, um, let's see. So I, this one has, uh, oh, I have a new one. I'm gonna show you what, what is up there. This is how they come when you get them. It looks like this. And they have these up here. Of course, it's a jewelry box. So these are up here for your necklaces and what have you. I just don't like those hanging out like that. So on this one, I covered them up with different buttons. And I layered the buttons. And then I, um, I these are, I think it's called Instant Relatives by Tim Holtz and they come already die cut. You can buy a whole package of them. I have some in my little red toolbox too. So I put some of those on. This was a PDF um, I got off of Etsy. So you can go to Etsy and you can type in Hall vintage Halloween PDFs and you'll come up with all kinds of options and they send you a link after you purchase it and you can download it and do whatever you want with the um, you know, the results, the papers that you print them on. So I did some of those with that. This was a little spider that is still available in the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby. And I thought, well, it needs a spider. And I had a little piece of paper mache candy corn that I put in. A little thing of seju needles because it's orange. You know, not for any other reason, it's orange. I have this little um, pin cushion that I did at a Shepherd's Bush retreat one year, and I don't know that pattern. I don't know if they have come out with it since. This was probably five years ago, but it fits in here perfectly. I'll show you the pattern, the fabric I used. This is one of the reasons I wanted to do a Halloween one, because I have such cute Halloween fabric that I never use. And then I ordered a little skeleton um, bag tag let's see bag what is that called a clip for your bag whatever and I put those on my little black scissors and I feel like there was another maybe a scarecrow or something it was a two-pack then I have a couple of little oh these are nice so these are little um, little tiny jars from Tim Holtz that is in the scrapbooking set or that his memorabilia section at, at the hobby store. And it comes in a pack of like eight or something, but some of them are perfect for needles. And then these are just two thread drops, not drops, winders that I did in black and orange. So I don't know, it's just kind of fun. And then I had this little black and white um, striped paper clip, so I just tied the ribbon on. And you glue this ribbon on. It's just, I can't even tell you how easy these are to make. If you haven't watched that video that Tanya and I did, and it was probably uh, my floss tube 41 or 42, there's a picture on the thumbnail of the video of Tanya and I sitting at a table with her dogs, and I have this look on my face because one of her dogs I was holding and he did not want to be held. He wanted to get down. I was oh, trying to pull him back. And anyway, it's a funny picture. So that's my Halloween one. Then I had gotten a green one to make a Christmas one. And here is my 
Christmas kit, which I will pull stuff out of it in a second after I kind of just give you the overview of it. So this one, this one, I got these um, Scrabble tiles in a pack at Hobby Lobby. So I think it was a pack that said Mary and Be Mary. There were a few words in there anyway. So that worked out great to put on those little extensions up there, which I liked that. And I have a little pack of needles from my grandma's sewing kit. Soon I'm gonna run out of her needles for doing this stuff. And um, this was a, well, it was in the Christmas section. I'm not sure, I think it's supposed to be, I don't know what it's supposed to be. It was just in the Christmas decoration, so I glued a magnet on the back, and I'll use it as a little needle minder. And then these um, Santas and also these poinsettias are little gift tags that you can get there by the pack. So they would make really cute floss drops, but um, or you can wind it thread on it like this. So I took red and green thread from my other grandma's sewing basket and wound them on here. Then I have one of my grandma's old tape measures in green. Look at this cute fabric too. Little mittens. So cute. Then I have a um, thread milk Christmas thread drops. Okay, this because I love cookies with sprinkles at Christmas time. Uh, those sprinkles just make me happy and I found the little tiny um, Christmas tree at Hobby Lobby and this is one of those little jars from Tim Holtz. This is one of the sizes that came in it. So I just thought I needed a little decoration. Like when you're stitching you can just set that up and you got a little Christmas tree for your stitching enjoyment. Of course I glued the, the top in because I don't need these little sprinkles everywhere. Then I also used one of the small ones for needles. I found this Ho 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 there. It's just fun to go through the Christmas section and do it now even if you don't think you're going to make one of these this season. But it's fun to go through and pull little things like this. You know, this is a cute little um, scissor holder, scissor fob. I bought these little things, just tied them with a little bow. So, and I've got some pins in there, put some buttons on there. Buttons are really easy to fill in some extra space and add a little bit of color on the top. You could also put buttons on the you know sides here if you wanted to. Again, it just doesn't take that long to do these kits. They're just fun to put together if you like that kind of thing. I think as a former scrapbooker, I'm always going to be into stuff like this. But I've ordered a couple more because I want to make a couple more. And I just want to remind you how this is how they come. And the first thing I do is rip out, so rip out, literally rip out these pieces that are supposed to be ring, ring holders. And I mean, it's going to look rough, but it doesn't matter because you're going to cover that up. So you're going to rip all that out. And then I take this off. So I just rip that out. First, I'm going to take these out. You know, you feel like you're tearing the whole thing apart, but it doesn't matter because you're going to cover them. So I take these dividers out, take the little ones out. You're really deconstructing the whole thing. And again, watch that video with Tanya because she has some great tips on putting the fabric on that were super helpful for me. Okay, I'm going to do this because otherwise I'm going to wreck it. And I actually did rip one of these borders, taking them out. Doesn't matter, I just covered it up with fabric, stuck it right back in there. You'd never know that it was ripped. This one seems to be particularly glued. All right, so I took the, this off. I'm gonna take out this middle one. You don't need that. So really, I've, I've basically taken all of it apart, and now I'm gonna take this whole piece out. This is the piece that I ripped before. So I'm gonna be a little careful on that, but you see how you just can pull carefully the whole thing around. 
Once you get that pulled out, it just seems like you're destroying the whole case. And it looks pretty sad once you've got everything pulled out. But just remember, you're going to put it all back in. It's going to look really pretty. All right. So I ripped that whole thing out. And then I'm going to cover that with whatever fabric. And I'm going to show you this Christmas one again so you can see. I covered it in this fabric all the way around. And I covered these pieces in here. And I think I cut maybe this much off just so it would fit together after I had got the fabric on. Again, you just glue the fabric on, cut it flush with your edges. I'm going to take this extra piece off. We don't need that on there. So you really deconstruct and reconstruct. And once you've got this, you can cover it. And then I um, have Paul cut mat board or foam core. No, he cuts mat board. Um, for these sections so you know I'm going to put these back once they're covered and then I have them cut the mat board for each of these sections and I did and you can make them any size because now you're you can move them around but I did two small sections and the larger section put a little batting on it cover it with paint with the fabric glue the fabric on the back tuck it in and that'll never come out so it's amazing how you can go from looking like this, which looks pretty bad, to another beautiful piece. And so when I get that done, and I think this is going to be like my everyday kind of easy to take to stitching, not themed necessarily, but I'll probably do like a color, a certain color scheme or something. I don't know. I was thinking red, white, and black since it's a cute or gray or I'll have to see what kinds of fabric I have. But anyway, you're really going to take it apart and then you're going to cover it with your fabrics and put it all back together and then do the fun stuff. And I just think this is really easy to do with buttons because you could do any color scheme. Um, and if you don't have vintage buttons, I always use my vintage buttons because I have so many jars of them. But if you don't have vintage buttons, you can easily buy any color of button at the hobby stores uh, or fabric stores and you can make it match perfectly so that is a little bit more about the tool boxes the tool kits the stitchy kits now i have some friends who look at that and think I, I just put my scissors and my needles in my case i don't need a fancy case i think why i like this so much is because they're so fun to make so it's not that you need the case it's just really fun to do. I think it's fun to do. All right. I also have another case to show you. And this is another idea for a gift for your stitchy friends. Two of them. I think it was um, Brenda and Laura that first showed this wooden case. Brenda and the Serial Starter. And so I, of course, went right to uh, Amazon and ordered it. I will link to it below. But it is a writing case and it comes, it's all wooden. And so what I did was I went to Etsy, typed in vintage sewing digital or PDF, I think vintage sewing PDF. And I bought all kinds of things that had reproduction, end of spools, reproduction, button cards, reproduction, sewing uh, images, so I got that and then I just started Mod Podging it onto this. I still need to go back and so I cut it flush and I did some, you know, sideways. Like I don't want it all lined up. So I kind of widge wadged everything in there. Some, some come over the edge, some don't. But I still need to go back with a fine piece of fine sandpaper and just kind of, um, kind of sand down some of the extra edges here a little bit. But I wanted to show it to you and I'll show you the inside. Maybe, there we go. Oh, I can show you these too, good. So the inside, I haven't done a whole lot with. I just did the bottom piece with a um, piece of fabric batting underneath. Up here I just 
clip to heart. I have these old, um, aren't these cool scissors? These are old Bakelite scissors that I got from eBay. I think I bid on them on eBay, but I thought they looked good in there. I'm not sure what to do with all these things. I think it's originally a writing, not a desk, but a little writing case. So there's room for pens and pencils and whatever you want to stick in there. Um, but these work well for your scissors. So I have to kind of figure out what else I want to do with it. But the other cool thing is it also comes with a um, leather, leather-like strap. So you can just flip it over your shoulder if you want to take all of your sewing paraphernalia somewhere. It's easy to, because this is a kind of a big box to tuck into a project bag like the other little ones. But, so it's kind of nice that it comes with a strap if you want to, and it's got loops somewhere. Yep, it's got loops right up here to put those on. So I was just playing with that. Like I said, I still have to do some more on the inside, but I thought this is less destructible than some of these other ones, especially that first one I did where the edges got all worn. Something like this, if the edges get worn, it's just going to look more and more vintage, which is going to look really cool. So if you have a lot of things that you like to carry or travel with or use when you do go to different places with your stitching, I think this might be a fun option. The other thing that it has is a little ledge here, and I thought that would be really cool for like propping your um, pattern up while you're stitching. Not the cover of it, but the inside, the chart as you're doing it. So it is just kind of a cool box. And again, I can link to that below um, for you. But these are the kinds of vintage labels that I got. They come on a sheet, you cut them out, you know, but there's a lot of options, a lot of buttons. The old vintage button cards were kind of cool. Old needle books. So I just did a, a variety of all of that. Had them all pre-cut so that when I was ready to start Mod Podging it, I, I could just keep pulling from my pile. You don't want to let the Mod Podge sit and start to dry too much. The other thing is, like I did Mod Podge all over the top, then I started laying the pieces on. You really want to put the Mod Podge right on top of what you're laying down because, and somebody explained this as, if you have the bottom of it wet, it starts to curl up and or wrinkle up because it's not evenly wet on the top and bottom. So it really helps if you put it on the bottom, start sticking them on almost like they were stickers, and then do just do a little layer of it on top, and that helps it not to crinkle. I have found out that even if it crinkles, it kind of smooths out as it dries. So not that big of a deal. And then since I was having fun doing that, I had also bought this little wooden box at um, Hobby Lobby. And so I did the whole Mod Podge thing with all of the, par the memorabilia on this too. Again, need to go back and just sand down the edges, but this would also be a fun little case for a friend for the holidays. You could fill it with you know, little um, sewing notions or again, maybe chocolate kisses and let them put their own sewing notions in, but it's a, just a quick, fun little gift. They have a lot of fun boxes in that unfinished wood section of Hobby Lobby, I gotta say. All right, so that's all of the sewing things. Now, let's talk about, um, well, okay, these are, these are not my three things, but I just had to show you these two things that are kind of fun. I also found this in the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby because I know a lot of you were looking for lockets that you could cross stitch in and we have that um, itty bitty Bristol free pattern on our free patterns page and I did that in a more of a rectangle locket. So now we're going to have to come up with something cute for this little circle one, but it is a nice little locket for putting stitching or what have you in. You could easily do your stitch your initial. Um, when I did that itty bitty Bristol, I looked in some of my Bristol patterns for just the, the initials that I wanted to use. So you, I know that you have lots of alphabets that you could use to fit in one of those. 
The other thing is my friend Kim showed me these last year. They're adorable, and I've looked for them, and I couldn't find them, and she brought me a set this week, and I'm so happy about this. Um, these are knitting needle stoppers. Little mushrooms, little gnomes in the Hobby Lobby Knitting Notions section. Now my Hobby Lobby didn't have them, but her Hobby Lobby had them, so that's why I was so thrilled. But what you can use them for is a scissor stopper. They're perfect for putting on the end of any scissors that you don't have a case for. Because you don't want to put your scissors in your project bag without a covering on the end of the tips. So these are perfect for that, whether you use the mushroom or you can use the little gnome guy. And she also has um, keeps a pencil in her tool box, her stitchy kit, and she puts one of these on the end of the pencil. So I'm going to also put a pencil in my little case, but isn't that fun? All right, so those were two freebies, not my three things. But let's talk about my three things. So today I want to tell you about, um, the first thing is stringberry. I don't know if you've ever found stringberry, but they make the cutest phone cases, iPad cases, uh, mouse pads. And so I have three to show you because I, you know, I decided I used to buy a phone case and just keep the same phone case for the two, three, four years I kept the phone which is fine, but then I started looking at all these cute ones and I thought, well, why don't I change out my phone case for the season? So the first one I got from them is this, and I love that one. Again, with the houses, I just love houses. And that's my, what I usually have on my phone. But then I wanted a Christmas one and I decided to try their, like a little folio wallet. So look how cute that is. And on the inside, you can um, keep credit cards or whatever you need to keep. There's a strap for keeping it together. And I just think that is so cute. So that's the one I'm using right now. I hadn't done like one of these folios before and I don't really love it. I love the pattern. I don't really love the folio thing, so I don't think I'll, I would do that again. Um, and then this is the one I'm gonna put on for the winter. So cute. And they make them for all different um, types of phones. And I think they make them, I, I don't know if they have them in stock or they make them on demand. You can get it with a matte finish, let's see. That's a matte finish. I don't know if you can tell. Or a glossy. That one's a glossy. But if you start looking at them, you're going to fall in love with so many of them because they're so cute. They have so many cute options. So that's number one, stringberry.com. And I will link to that below. My second favorite thing this week, not just this week, for months now, is Hue Chocolate Bars. So one of my friends told me about this. This is my favorite. This one's open. See, I've had that much. I have one square. One square a day, but it's perfect. My favorite is the salty dark chocolate. I told Paul, you, if you are looking for stuff for my Christmas stocking, you can just fill it with this because that would make me happy. They were out of the salty dark chocolate this week at my grocery store, so I got the cashew butter and I haven't tried it yet. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll like it or not, because I'm pretty addicted to this one. So Hue, they do have a website. You can probably find them at your grocery store. They're not cheap. I think they're like $4 or something for a box. That's why I only have a square a day, but um, they're so good, gosh. But they do have a website, so I'll link to that below. And then the third thing for the three things is um, a website that I listen to, if you like jazz, I don't know if you know about jazzgroove.org, but I have had that on the shop computer for, I don't know, probably four months. I love jazz playing in the background. Paul doesn't like jazz so much, so I try and play it at work when I'm there by myself. 
because you know when when we're open for the shop we have regular um, music going but for when I'm there by myself jazzgroove.org again I'll link to that below but it's uh, uh, free you don't have to pay for it it's free of course they do fundraising a couple times a year but they just have a good playlist and just um, just upbeat instrumental music going on in the background which I love so three things stringberry hue bars and jazz groove all right let's talk about the winner of last month's I've got to flip my page so I can tell you last month's winner of all of these trims remember there's 20 different colors a hundred yards and what did I do with it oh here we are all right Leisha, Lesha, Crawley, here it is. You are the winner of 100 yards of trim. I hope you have a lot of finishing to do because you're, you have a lot of trim coming to you. So if you can contact me, my email address is below. I will get all of this trim shipped right off to you. This is what I use for most of the pillows that I trim. I also like Lady Dot. Um, pom-poms and her um, ribbons but a lot of the time I use the chenille I just like the texture that it adds to my um, little trims okay and then for this next time we have another drawing of one of Deborah's beautiful project bags and um, she always includes a little accessory pouch when she sends these to me for giveaways and this is Deborah from Joyful Stitching Store on Etsy. I will link to it in the show notes below. Look how cute. Teresa Kogut Christmas Project Bag. So fun. And so I want you to use the word snow in your comment if you would like to be entered to win this project bag. Santa's Snowman. Christmas trees, reindeer, so cute. So use the word snow in your comment if you want to be entered to have a chance to win one of those bags and do check out Deborah's Etsy store. She's got a lot of cute bags all the time on her, uh, in her shop. All right, now I want to do a little, okay, I brought home a lot of Christmas projects, photos, not patterns, finished projects. Um, most of them I've done. I didn't do two of them, and I'll tell you which two I didn't do. But I brought them home because I thought it'd be fun to do a Christmas parade of finished projects that you might want to do sometime, or you might want to have the pattern for your holiday stitching. So I'm going to try and scoot things around a little bit. I know I always say this, but this table is very full when I start these and then I just kind of throw things down on the floor and the chairs as I'm done and then when I'm done filming it's such a mess to clean up but it's all good okay so let's start with this pattern which is what's it called O oh, Tidings of Comfort and Joy by Modern Folk Embroidery and I did this a couple of Christmases ago. So this is white done on blue. I did not want to stitch on blue, so I stitched blue on a neutral fabric. I'm not going to remember what these fabrics are. So I apologize ahead of time that I can't tell you what these fabrics are. But I really love this one. And it was a quick stitch. This would also look really cute in a pillow or finished on a book. I brought, I think I brought, yeah, I brought one of the book finishes, the only book finish I've done. So that's fun too. So that is that one, which I would leave up all the time. I mean, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, and it's a little house in the snow, but still, still, how could you put that away? And then this one, Merry Christmas Sampler by La Di Da. And here's that one. I love this one. 
and it looks like I did it on kind of a more of a gray almost than what's in the photo but I also like the the brown in the photo I just kind of do things on whatever I have whatever looks good at the time that's such a sweet little one and it does say Merry Christmas but I still why well, leave it up at the shop all year round I think I will at home too someday all right let's see patterns I have patterns to go along with all of these I don't know where they are right now so I'm not going to take the time to find them all for you because you'll see what they look like some of them I have some of them I don't so here's Santa Collector so this is one of my designs that I came out with I came out with that this summer for Christmas in July but it was sure fun to work on all of those little Santas and you can do all of the Santas individually in pillows and Bonnie stitched this one Bonnie from the shop stitched this one Santa Collector I do have a collection of Santas so that's one of the reasons I did Santa Collector it also matches my snowman collector so that's another one this is one of my favorites this comes from home for the holidays book from blackbird designs and it's christmas garden and i did this on 25 count i think uh maybe antique white lugana over one so one stitch over one and I know this doesn't look like blackbird colors because I brightened up all of the colors and it's just four colors I think red green gold brown yeah and again I love the small size because it was done on 25 count over one but it is one of my very very favorite finishes projects that I've ever done I might have been one of my first samplers that I did too. I love it so much. This time of year I want it at my house, not hanging up at the shop, but it is hanging up at the shop. So um, This one is also from that book and it's the Cardinal and I think I did this on 16 count Ada, some kind of green and across the bottom it has um, French French words I don't know what the French words said let's see if I can this is a great book if you don't have it you should get it what does it say say law it's the season for joy that's my French one year French coming in because it says it in French but instead of doing that because I, I knew I wanted to have it up all winter all the time let's be honest um, I just took the same half snowflakes that they used on the top and made a border along the bottom but this is another one that I just really love I love how it turned out and I think they finished it as a pillow. Why? I don't know that you can tell. Or did I just show you that it was a pillow? Nope, they framed it. It would be cute as a pillow also. All right. This one was really fun to stitch. I did this several years ago. And this is from, I think it's called The Christmas List from Silver Creek Sampler. And I, it was fun to stitch because it went so fast because you're doing a word and then you're doing a little motif and then you do another word and the only thing I changed on it was I added the word joy I think it said and I think it said peace and goodwill and I couldn't believe there was not the word joy in this whole thing because to me that's just so you know so Christmas is the joy it brings and so I just put the word joy in there you I use the same style of letters that she used and now there's another one I'm going to show you that pattern in a few minutes from Erica 
Erica, I can't remember her last name. And it's similar to this, and I think I'm gonna do that one too, just because I had so much fun stitching it. It was really fun. All right. This one is probably my favorite favorite. And that is Quaker Christmas 2. This was my, ignited my love of Quaker stitching, we'll say. I don't know. There's something about, a lot of times on Quakers, I stitch line by line. So I use my magnet board and I'll, you know, depending on how much open space there is, but a lot of times I'll stitch line by line rather than stitching a motif and a leaf and a whatever. And it's almost magic because you stitch line by line and you go all the way down and you get to the bottom and then you have this beautiful circle or half circle or whatever that's finished and it looks so pretty. So here's my... Well, I know it's so big, I can barely put it in here. Uh, Quaker Christmas. I did this on 36 count winter moon. And I used uh, sulky threads. One, uh, one, well, sulky comes on a spool. So you just use it as it comes off the spool. And it was, it was sure fun to stitch. It was a big project. And I started it a couple years ago, and then at some point early, what's the year on here? Hang on. 2022. So early in 2022, I decided I'm going to finish this this year. And I stitched the 2022 down there, and then I put it away for months, and somehow I was looking at my Instagram trying to find something for somebody and I saw this progress photo and I thought, shoot, it was October. I thought, shoot, I put 2022 in there. I better pull that out and get it finished. So I did, and I was so glad to have it done, but also sad. You know, aren't there some patterns where you're working and you love the experience so much of working on them that you're a little bit sad when you put that last stitch in? That's what this was for me. Happy to have it done, couldn't wait to have it framed, but. A little sad to be done with it so all right these next two I did not do <clears throat> these were stitched by my friend Penny who had a cross stitch shop in Wyoming and unfortunately she passed away during COVID and so her kids sold her um, samples and uh, had big sales in her store and I was so fortunate to get these two samples she is a beautiful stitcher so this is Country Cottage Needleworks and this is the gingerbread one and we sell these in a set the whole set together so isn't that fun just so many beautiful things going on in there and both of these that I bought from her um, shop were ones that I thought I wanted to do for myself someday. So that's one. And the other one is this one. Santa's, I think it's Santa's Village. Gingerbread? Yeah, Santa's Village. Again, she took all the individual patterns and put them all together, which is also the way I would have stitched them. Just happy pieces. I love them. Here's two that are old, no longer available, but I like them so much, so I wanted to show them to you again. Um, the first one is Merry Christmas Mittens. And this one came out of one of the old Cross Stitch Magazines. Not just Cross Stitch, what's the other one? Can't remember, but you all know what it was. And I had saved this issue for all this time because I always wanted to stitch these mittens. So I stitched those a couple years ago. And I love having that in my house. And the other one is because a dear, dear person lent me this uh, Joyous Christmas from Birds of a Feather Pattern, which is also out of stock. And I stitched this last December, and it was my 
pattern that I wanted for years. I just I love it. Again, from Birds of a Feather, Joyous Christmas. No longer available, but I'm happy to have it. And I stitched it up fast because I don't like the responsibility of borrowing patterns from people. Like, I just want to get it done and get it right back to them. So I stitched that fast, and I do keep this one up all year, too. And then I have just a few smalls, small Christmas ones to show you. A lot. Really, it's a good thing I have a big table. Can't even reach that one. Okay, first is the set of all of the different carols from Erica Michaels. And each one is a separate pattern. And they come with a pattern for it as a strawberry or a pattern for it as a pillow. So I made mine into pillows. This is another one where literally one night of stitching. If you have, you know, a three hour stitching night. I think I did, I can't remember if I did all of them or if there's one or two that I didn't do, but they look so cute in a bowl together. Put a little greenery in there, really fun. And then this one I have is one of my designs, Joy, My Wish for You. Little red house, little jingle bell. This is Cup of Cheer from Brenda Gervais. And this is the one I was telling you about that I finished on a book, which is really nice because then it, it sets really easily you know just open the book a little bit the hard part is finding the right size book for your finished projects I almost think so now I when I go to the antique store I look for books this size or a little bit bigger and now I think what I would do is figure out what book I wanted to use then find the pattern and figure out what size fabric to stitch it on because when you tr take a finished piece and then you try and find the right size book almost impossible so to finish this one then I just Paul cut um, foam core for me and then I pinned it as if I was going to frame it and then I glued it onto the book glued the trim around so really easy to finish off I love those Santa mugs I just ordered a teeny tiny Santa mug. I'm doing this because I think the lady showed it on her fingertip. A teeny tiny Santa mug that was made for a dollhouse. Cannot wait to get that. And then I brought these. This is from Simone's Smalls, which this whole book is one that I love. But I brought it because I did this pattern, for example, in red and green. So a lot of the patterns in that little booklet are either done in red or red and blue, but you could easily swap it out to the color of the season. So red and green, um, black and orange for Halloween, you know, anytime you need an extra little filler pillow in your display, you can do that. But then as long as I was bringing that, I thought I would bring you the other two that I've done from that book. So it's a little stitchy verse. And then this house is so cute, isn't it? Look, and you finish it into a dimensional pillow. So you stitch around the edge. I'm not sure, she, I don't think, I almost think she didn't have you finish it the same way the block parties from Hands On Design, but I love the way that Kathy does hers. And so that's how I did this one. I did not stitch the bottom of it because nobody's going to see it 
if I'm going to stitch that much of a bottom, I'm going to make a whole new pillow from it. So anyway, that would be a cute house to do up for Christmas too. Just do it in red and green. Or make it a little haunted house, orange and black. So it's a very fun book to have. All right, so those are just some Christmas finishes that I thought it would be fun to share for you. Let me make sure I did all of them, yes. All right, real quick, I have a few uh, shop things, new to the shop, that I want to show you, and then we will be done. Um, before I jump into shop, let me do question of the day. This summer I asked you, what is something that your town, that you love about your town in the summertime? Special um, festivals they have or special activities or something you love to do in your town. And now I want to know, what is something special about your time in the winter time? So it could be at Christmas, um, it could be the weather, it could be something else, but what do you love about where you live in the winter time? For me, there's a couple things. I love that here in Colorado, um, we're at 5,000 uh, sea level, 5,000 feet. And so we're a lot closer to the sun than we were in St. Louis, which is like 500. So I love that it can snow a lot. Like we can get 8 to 12 inches of snow easily. And it stays and is beautiful for like three days. And then it's all melted off. So we have these snow, melt off, sunshine for weeks, another big snow, melt off, sunshine. And I love that. Like the snow never stays around long enough to get dirty and gray and you know, all of the things that we used to have um, in the Midwest all the time because the snow just stayed all the time. Here it just gets so warm in between the snows. Like people think that Colorado is such a cold place to live and I found the Midwest so much colder because of the humidity. Here we wear a scarf. A lot of days I just wear a scarf. I don't even wear a coat to run around and do errands. So I love that about my town. I also love the holiday lights that they put up downtown. So beautiful. The whole town has trees and all the trees are lit up and so pretty. So tell me what do you love about your hometown in the wintertime? Okay, now new things at the shop. So we got some new needle minders that are adorable from Flamingo Toes. And so I just brought this easel because it has all of them in there. All of the new ones, but we have a lot of other ones, regular ones from her. I don't think actually that the hedgehog is new. I think I've had that one before, but all of the other ones are new. Some Christmas ones. I love the little tea, tea set with the cross stitches on it. And I got myself the little snowman. So those are fun, new. And then I just brought a few patterns to share with you, including the other one that I want to do with all the Christmas words. This one, I am so delighted that she put this out because um, this is running with needles and scissors. She had these Noel buttons last year, I think as a kit, and I missed them. And I can't wait to stitch those little buttons. And also it includes the word love, the graph for love. All right. These are ones that I showed you. That's where those extra ones are. All right, we have a few Erin Elizabeth. That's what her name is, Erin Elizabeth. I gotta sort these. Erin Elizabeth and Shannon Christine are sisters. And from what I know, Erin used to um, design under Shannon Christine's label, help with the designs too. And then she, uh, started her own pattern business. So this is the one with the words that I also want to do. I think they'd look really cute, framed and put together. And look at that big old joy right in the middle. So that draws me right in. So cute. Cup of cocoa, elf feet, Rudolph. I love that one. Um, another Christmas one she has is Noel, which I thought was really pretty. All right, and then 
I brought the Shannon Christine ones because, oh, here's another Aaron. No, that's Shannon. Um, this is a new one for her, just out. The interesting thing is she gives you color, different color combinations if you want to do the trees in different colors. And it really makes a difference, doesn't it? I mean, they really look different. But this is, I, I, I think, I mean, I don't know if that's how she looks at it, I'm sure, but I have had this one of hers for years. Have I done it yet? No, I have not, but isn't that pretty? So it's like the snow, the snow patterns, falling snow. And then there's another one called falling snow. This is winter snowfall. This is falling snow. I think they look so elegant. And then she has fun ones too. I, I want to do this one, the gnomes. She has a hot cocoa one I should have brought. I didn't bring that one's cute. This is a newer one, winter snow fun. And a cup of cheer. Anyway, very talented sisters. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was a new designer that we, she's not new, she's new to us, um, that we brought in. And I've seen her stuff on, I probably Instagram, but it's Joan Elliott. And I got all of her silhouettes. So this is a year of silhouettes, which I think would be fun to do. Just stitch your box each month and you'd be done by the end of the month. Winter Solstice. And keep in mind that, you, you know, she's done a lot of these in black. You could do them in any color. And I always recommend the Hanks from MPI because it's such a good deal and a lot of floss for the price. Here's a Thanksgiving one that I thought was beautiful. You could also do parts of this, like this house would be really pretty on its own or the Horn of Plenty. So you can do any of the bands as their own picture or into a, made into a drum. Here's Christmas in Blue. Christmas Eve sampler. I think this is so pretty with the little pops of light in the yellow. Here's Christmas Redwork collection and she kind of broke out broke them out to show you too how to use parts and pieces to make smaller framed pieces or pillows and the last one and I'm not even a witch person and I think this is adorable for Halloween so there you have it we have so many things on the horizon that I'm excited about. Can't wait to share with you guys. I will keep you updated in my newsletter. So be sure to go to our website, coloradocrossstitcher.com. There's three S's in the middle of that. So make sure you get all three S's. And if you scroll to the bottom, you can sign up for our newsletter. Those come out every Wednesday afternoon, almost every Wednesday, probably at Christmas time. I might take a break in there, but um, usually every Wednesday. And I will let you know just as soon as some of this stuff comes in that I can't tell you yet that I'm so excited about. I know that's annoying, but um, so sign up. We've got good things coming. I hope you enjoyed today's floss tube. Thank you for watching. Thank you if you stuck with me all the way to the end. Be sure to leave a comment below. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're so inclined. And I will see you back after the holidays. So happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everybody. And I'm, I've already got so many things on my agenda that I want to share with you on my next floss tube. So I hope you'll join me then. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.